Yeah, what did you do? I know. <laughs> my friends are like, where'd you, you get know, that? Like, my friends are like, where'd you get that swagger? You click your bubble. What's he saying? What are you saying? <laughs> oh shoot, I know I can do it on my laptop. My little bubble, what little bubble? Do you need me to cue you when you're on? You're on. And good evening everyone, <laughs> live from Las Vegas. <laughs> this, this is, is the, the Sports Adrenaline operation. Show. The Vegas Golden Knights head into the nation's capital with the Stanley Cup final series tied up at a game apiece. It's now a best of five series. We'll have news also from the Raider Nation coming up. UNLV, Las Vegas Aces versus Washington uh, coming up tomorrow. They're in Seattle tonight. Nice. But most of our attention, of course, will be focused on the drive for the Cup. Tony Cardasco along with John Castanino, Matt Gutierrez, Rick Strasser. Haley Brooks is in the house. Haley with Haley's comments. Talk to me. He never talked to that me. excited about us. And, uh, of course, uh, we have Luis Negretti our production assistant, and the show is produced by Richard Giacovino. Let's start off, guys, with uh, the knighthood, okay? Start off Should with the knighthood. We? Yeah. Sounds like a good place. We're, we're now, we did this last time, and we're doing it this time, okay? We're going to invite the Washington Capitals fans groups from uh Because they Facebook like me. Onto the show. Because they like me. Well, they clearly, you're, me catering, to the close groups. you're catering to the crowd with yeah. the red shirt. Yeah. So, great job. No, this is my rebel red. Great so. job. Okay, so anyway... VGK and the Washington Capitals are tied up in the best of seven series now at one game apiece after the Caps won game two here in Las Vegas on Wednesday night. That was a thrilling contest, three to two final. And uh, guys, let's just talk about uh, the way the series has gone thus far. And also, you know, the fact that I still believe that these two teams are absolutely even. I do. No, oh, I, how can you disagree with that at this point? It's, it's a 1-1 I mean, one, one one series. One series yeah. Both teams are they're, they're mirroring each other. I mean, they're playing very similar styles. Um, neither, I mean, aside from, and we'll get to it later, aside from the amazing save from Holtby later on, neither goaltender seems to be on their A game yet. Neither defense really seems to be on their A game yet. Um, it, it's, it hasn't been the cleanest series, but you have two very similar teams, two, two extremely resilient teams. John will, John will tell you how much he's heard that word from, from D.C. media up to this point. And, uh, and what you have is, is, except for the empty netter, essentially two one-goal games. It's tied 1-1. You're going back to D.C. Well, and I think what stuck out at least to me in game two was it kind of mirrored for me the, the series with San Jose the way it started. Uh, because in game two uh, of the San Jose series, Vegas really played into San Jose's chippiness, started to retaliate a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, and it ended up costing them. And uh, I, I, I was actually surprised to see them do that in game two. Uh, there, were, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, targeting Wilson. There was a lot of retaliation hits. And uh, it surprised me because that's not their game. Uh, yeah. they, their game has always been bouncing back, uh, coming back, playing their game, which is speed, which is accuracy. And, and I think it threw them out of their game a little bit. Uh, did they have scoring chances? Yes. They, had, they did have some great scoring opportunities. Uh, I, I do think Holtby played a good game in game two. Um, but at the same time, there were a lot of rebounds that they missed. Yep. Um, so they, I, I think they had their opportunities. I, I just think they, they got chippy and they shouldn't have. John? Um, I really enjoyed uh, game two. I, 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 I've enjoyed like the John. series as a whole. Um, and for the Vegas fans out there that are panicking, I, I said it last night uh, on Twitter, Relax. don't panic. Um, it's it's going to be fun and enjoy this, right? It, you've enjoyed the ride this far so far. I, I, the Capitals are a road team. They're road warriors. 
the Golden Knights can win at home. They can certainly win on the road. So I think if there's any panic setting in, it shouldn't be setting in. I think you've you got to look at the perspective of both teams are pretty happy with where they're at right now. And you say they're very even. I mean, I, I think Vegas has the edge, both in speed and both in goaltending. And we haven't seen Fleury play at his best. We certainly haven't seen this team play at its best. And I think that's what we should be looking forward to is finally a full 60-minute effort coming in Game 3 or in Game 4, hopefully Game 3 and 4. Um, and, and I think that's really going to be the difference here is who can put a full 60-minute effort together. I mean, clearly that's obvious. But um, Matt mentioned it, and, and I'll talk about it now. Resiliency is what the Capitals are all about. They've sustained injuries to Backstrom, uh, the suspensions to Wilson. Mm -hmm. And they've now injured. You know. they, and they've been down 2 uh, nothing to the Blue Jackets in the first round, and they bounced back. So it seems like there's some similar storylines where nobody picked the Capitals to win their own division. Um, nobody thought they would clearly make it as far as they did. And, boy, sounds pretty familiar to what's happening in Las Vegas right now. So these are two very similar teams, and it's going to be a fight to the death, uh, yeah. six or seven games. Now, if you have any questions, you can chime in. Uh, Haley Brooks is with us. Haley's comments. Haley, how are you? Are you enjoying this uh, cup season? Yeah, That's really... S-Z-N, by the way, right? Cup Why season. Is that? Yeah. Is that a thing? Did you it's make a, that up? Yeah. It's Tony's hit. Because it's a <laughs> new hashtag, I guess. Cubs. Cup season. season, yeah. How are things over there? Good. Um, Nicholas Colvin said he agrees with you guys, but you also need to defend yourself and teammates. So that's the thing that he said. Yeah. To on. a degree, I, I agree with that, but you have to keep it within the confines of your game. You can't get out of what you do well, which is outskate people and get into those, those kind of shoving matches, if you will, and, and take yourself out of your own rhythm. If it's, if it's going to it's going to affect the way that you play the game, then I don't think you need to go there. I mean, do, do it within the game. And I think you saw that with a, with a couple of, of good hits in the game that, you know, I mean, it, you talk about the Kuznetsov hit. That was a legal hit. Yep, sure it was. was. A, it was a legal hit, sure and was. it didn't take them out of their game at all, but it, it did impact the game. It could impact the series going forward. I, I think of anybody, interestingly, I think that uh, Marcheseau has been – uh, maybe taken out of his game a little, maybe a little bit uh, with all of this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, we, we could discuss the hit in game one if you want, but uh, whether that was clean or not from Wilson, um, I'm of the opinion um, that, that it was more towards the back than the front, uh, that he had time uh, to, to not follow through with the hit, all those things. Um, but I think Marcheseau has been off a little bit and has been getting into the scrum a little bit more than uh, he has, and I, I, I don't think that benefits him. I've never seen Gerard Gallant, and you were there last night, John, but I've never seen him so annoyed as I did in the post-game presser last night. Mm -hmm. uh, he was really annoyed where he never loses his cool, and I thought that there were some legitimate questions, some not legitimate, from the media last night, like as far as you know your defense and how they're playing in the passing lanes and in the zone, and he wanted nothing to do with it. What was up with it? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, it was, you know, and you got that in stretches from Gallant when the team wasn't playing well, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what we saw from him last night. He knew his team didn't play well. Outside of the 12, first 12 minutes in period one, mm -hmm. uh, they got hustle in period two, and then they were playing desperation hockey in period three. So. And they even went 10 minutes without a shot on goal. Yeah, so, in the, in, so in the third uh, period. I, I think he was pretty overall unhappy with uh, several performances there, he, even though, again, they dominated. You know, you go up one nothing, and, boy, they looked fast. They looked yeah. awesome defensively. And yeah. then Colin Miller gets spun around on, on that first goal, um, that the Caps score, and then the wheels just come off the defense. They have to, they have to figure out a way to stay out of the box. Too many times they, they're, they're going to the box when they should be on a, on a power play. Instead of it being five on four, they're four on four, and, and they're giving up opportunities that way. Uh, this, this isn't a, a heavily penalized team. They need to get back to playing clean hockey because I think that they are the better team five on five. I think they'll be able to control things a little better uh, when they do play five on five and – Every time, every time they're in the box, it's, it's costing them. Well, I thought when they went four on four, I thought at that moment, I thought this benefits Vegas uh, because of, of their accuracy, because of their speed, the way they can spread the ice. And it was just the opposite in that mm -hmm. four on four. It really surprised me. I think what happened, that what I noticed, one of my observations early, was that the Washington Capitals, when they were getting the odd man rushes, and you know what? They were overpassing. And I guess that they've been doing that all season long, the Capitals. But in uh, the odd man rushes, 
uh, if you notice, they were taking it straight down the center of the ice, and they started to fan out a little bit more and try to open things up and also try to play, uh, play the puck off of the boards. The biggest opportunity that went awry of the night was when Vegas had a five-on-three advantage and couldn't, pardon the pun, capitalize. No, you're absolutely right. That's a huge, it's a huge turning point in the game. If you're the Capitals trying to nurse a one-goal lead late in the, well, what was it midway through the third period, yeah, you got and you go on a five-on-three. Five on they had a three-minute power play, bookend five-on-fours with the five-on-three there in the middle minute, and uh, and they, I mean, they have a, they had a couple looks, but they couldn't get any any really great looks there. They couldn't get anything sustained, and that was the difference in the game. Outside of the 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 tuck shot later on. I mean, you, you have a three-minute power play with, with a five-on-three in there. You've got to find a way to score. Power play wasn't very good last night. No. I mean, they got a power play goal, right, uh, from uh, was Colin Miller. Uh, no, Shea Theodore, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, Miller scoring the first goal. Uh, no, uh, I'm all over the place. Sorry. Yeah, they sure. scored, game one they scored yeah, early in that yeah. power play. It was Shea, right, yeah, right, what, right and away. And that's what it was, right? It, the, the power play was not very good at all um, um, last night at all. You get one shot on a five-on-three, one decent shot. It was it was pretty, pretty poor. Right. Uh, and, again, I think you saw – a lot um, kind of show his frustration of that. I want to go to some sound because we have Eric Howla who starts off his interview, and that's the first question that was asked in the locker room afterwards. Five on three, how disappointing was it to not come away with a goal here to Eric Howla? It was a good, great opportunity for us and uh, couldn't score. And, and uh, you know, that's what you hope for, right? You're down one and you get a five on three. And, and, uh, you know, we, it's just how I went today. Do you guys feel like you got enough opportunities generated on the top? I think we can be a lot better. After a dominant first 10 minutes again, uh, did you sense a letdown in the play or the execution? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that goal was tough for sure. Uh, I felt like we uh, we changed a little bit. I thought we were going great in the first 12 minutes, and and, uh, and then uh, they capitalized on that power play. I don't know. We just kept playing, and, and uh, we just couldn't find a way. Uh, it was a big goal in the second to give us a chance in the third, and, and uh, we just came up short. That's just how it goes. 1-1, one, one, you've been here before going on the road. What is the mindset or mentality of your team? Same as all year. Um, we just keep fighting. Um, it's 1-1, one, one, like you said. Things could be worse. And, and uh, Now we go in their building and, and uh, we play our uh, best hockey. We've been good on the road, so, so uh, no worries. Eric, can you talk about same mentality they've always had, right? So I, I, I didn't feel anything different in that locker room. They lost the game. They know they can play better. There was no, oh, my gosh, we lost our first game in the Stanley Cup final. Let's hit mm -hmm. the panic button. They haven't done that all year. No, no. They've only there, swept they one series. There was, there was I mean, nothing, yeah. nothing out, of the, out of the ordinary in that locker right. room, except for Gallant's kind of irritation in his post-game press conference. It was What was he most before. irritated about? Uh, I, th I think when, when you bring up Marc-Andre Fleury, clearly a guy that's that's been – brought in to this point, I think maybe. But then again, it, it doesn't really matter to him. I think any questions that kind of question the way his team plays, he's defensive of his team. Mm -hmm. He's always been that way. And, and mm -hmm. you could say, you know, where was it sloppy or where do you need to get better? Those are kind of the lob questions for Gallant. But when specific things are brought up, whether it's passing lanes or something defensively or Marc-Andre Fleury, he gets defensive over his guys. And I think that's what, I think that's what it was. He hasn't, he hasn't called anybody out this entire season. Mm -hmm. At any point right. has he thrown anybody under the bus? No, he didn't throw anyone under the bus. But uh, I don't know if you guys noticed what they did, though. Was it a panic move? Or why are they now changing up the uh, line combinations when we saw Tuck playing along with Marcia So and playing with Carlson? Uh, they were doing something that we typically don't see, regardless well, of what the has, situation is. But he has done that throughout the season, late in games. Uh, if he's not if he's not happy with the way things are going, he has changed lines up late in the game. It's not a permanent yeah. change. It's just something to kind of to kind of mix it up and maybe light a fire under under certain players or certain lines. And it's and it's worked for the most part throughout the the season. And I mean, let's be honest that that shot that Tuck had that that was a goal ninety five percent of the time. Hope he got back on it. The, the puck didn't get off the ice, and he was able to get a save. Let's, well, that, let's the, talk about the, it. The, the combination yeah, but before worked. you do, it just it they, didn't it didn't go. And, and the interesting thing is, I mean, they they were taken out of their game quite a bit by what Washington did. Absolutely, I, I think this is an interesting stat. Uh, Knights had 69 shot up uh, attempts in game two, only 17 scoring chances, and of those 17, only seven were considered high danger chances. Uh, I thought they, I saw 11, but okay, so so but, seven. I mean, either way, it's yeah. it's a lot less than what Vegas is used to with the way that they pressure, uh, put pressure into the offensive zone. Well, they weren't able to do that. And then when and then when they're playing catch up, 
Washington has what you know what they all like to call the picket fence that that owns that neutral zone, which kind of mirrored. Um, you remember Tony early in the season when they ran into that? I think for the first time when they were in New York against the Islanders when they were behind and they had trouble in the neutral they zone, had a hard time they getting things into the, the offensive line. zone. Absolutely. And, and and I think I think that happened a little bit last night, and they've yeah. got to get more of those scoring chances. I just think I think Washington had too many odd man rushes and that is going to you know that's going to hurt I think the Golden Knights later on well, it, in this series it definitely could because you have breakaways you have a two on one they had a three on two a couple times and they just couldn't they just couldn't knock in the puck but let me let's talk about uh tuck no we don't no we can't talk about, can't talk about that say. because the Knights won though so uh, yeah, that's no, his argument so, so they, they lost the that. game it's been a lot calmer tonight we'll guys so, so, nice. so tuck uh, that's because well VGK were up to nothing of course, I'd be going through fanboy mania. But Tuck robbed by Holtby. We talked about that with a couple of minutes uh, to go in the game. Um, and somehow that was just an unbelievable paddle save, you know, for, for the goaltender. Uh, Stop the for, puck cold. For Holtby. Everyone thought it was in. I'm watching the game on TV, and everyone behind the net, is they're all standing up. Oh, yeah. Holtby, the uh, one-armed bandit, right? Uh, and it was just, to me... Uh, a play that wasn't slow in developing. And when you saw Tuck, I mean, he put everything into that shot. And yeah. that's what the most amazing part of the save, they're calling it the save. Yeah. Like in the Washington media today, I'm, I read all the stories. I listened to the radio uh, reports today. And every, that's all people are talking about. It'll if be Washington the save goes if they on, go on to win. If they go on Otherwise, to win this, footnote. this is yeah. going to be one of the legendary saves, I think, in NHL history, that could turn around. It definitely would turn around. A well, it was a fantastic save. I mean, it's a reactionary a move save, by a goalie a yeah. when he gets beat save. going to the no, other it's side one of one. the pass. One one, Tony. Yeah, I think the it's Cap, not the save until they win the cup. It's Caps one fans one. Are going to make a, a way bigger deal out of this? Clearly, I think Vegas, like I said, business as usual. Now we didn't get Alex Tuck in the locker room. Uh, he wasn't in there, at least that I saw, so we couldn't talk to him. You know, just kind of see his emotion. Uh, after not putting that one in the net. But we talked to some Capitals fans, Matt and I did, afterwards. And uh, obviously, the, the, they're thrilled um, with the save. Greatest save in Capitals history when you feel like it's the context and it's their first ever Stanley Cup win, uh, which took them 44 years, and it took the Golden Knights uh, uh, day. 300 days-ish um, <laughs> or, or so. Yeah. So, I mean, they've been waiting a long time for this. But Caps fans, at least the ones that we talk to, very respectful of Vegas. They know this is going to be a, a grind them out series, so they're not making any assumptions they don't they, want to come here for game seven right. they've already made that clear they want no part of coming back to vegas for game seven let's go to some comments and we've got some very Hallie. very good questions yeah Hallie, we do let um, them rip well the first one you guys kind of touched on it a little bit we tucked um, on it no you got i get it, it. Do, we, do we want to talk about it again go the five it. on three yeah five on three sure talk about it okay got a score um, on a five on three so, Got Marcus to. Mitchell asks, what went wrong with the – there's a big white space on my computer screen. Um, what went wrong with the 5-on-3 with the Knights? Thought for sure we would get a goal out of that, if not 5-on-4. Well, like, like he mentioned with the stat, just not enough high-danger chances. They weren't, they weren't getting the puck to the net Too in, tentative. In, in close-in zones. They weren't, they weren't pressing the net, not enough really good slot opportunities. Uh, it was a lot of stuff coming from far out where you're given hopefully time to see the puck and – but at it's the same time, Holtby doesn't secure the puck very often. He, so many rebounds. Not enough guys rushing they, the net. They though. weren't there. They well, were they, not in front of the net enough like they normally are where they've scored so many goals through the playoffs. That was the very disappointing. That, that'll sum this up, though. They got oh. too cute, which is the, the problem that they've had. Did they do that? And they do they that do a that. lot. Yeah. They got too cute. They weren't throwing pucks at the net, and maybe they were looking for that extra pass, whatever it was, that bigger window. Um, and, and I can't remember who said it. I think it was Shea Theodore that said uh, that they, were just, they just got too cute, and they've done that in fits and starts throughout the season, and that's when their power play has struggled, and that's when the team has struggled, yep. and, the, and that's, what they, that's what they did last night. Yeah, yeah, vol volume of shots got has got to increase. Oh, yeah. Kevin Potter, what I saw was the Caps adjusted. It didn't chase behind their own net. They waited for the puck to come up, clogged up in front of the net, and made fast transition to get those odd man rushes. Good, good point. Very good point. That's yeah. exactly what they did, and I think that they were – well prepared, uh, maybe better prepared for game two than game one. Uh, the Capitals, as far as their scouting. Not the first 10 minutes. I mean, that was, uh, I thought yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, it was a game typical, set match Golden Knights. Yeah, but, it was a typical uh, after that goal but we've for seen, We've seen all season long, Gallant has had the ability game to game 
to adjust to whatever style the other team is playing. Mm -hmm. uh, first game, I think, is kind of a wash. Both teams were a little out of sorts, and, and the game got away from both of them. There's a lot of back and forth and, and kind of a wide-open game. Most um, lead changes in, in right. the history of changes. a Stanley Cup final changes. game. Yeah. Yesterday, you saw things settle down a little bit, but it you know the, the, the Capitals were, were able to adjust a little better and play more to what they wanted to do than what the Knights were going to do. I think in game three, you're going to see Gallant make the necessary adjustments, and I think you see the Knights come out and do what they've done this entire season, especially in the postseason after a loss, which is rebound. I still think, I, I have to believe that Washington is in the head of the Golden Knights as far as no, their heads being ridiculous. on the swivel. I'm telling that's you right ridiculous. now, they're watching where Based Wilson's on, coming from. What did from? you see that, that suggests okay, that? Okay, just no, watch how example. tentative they've been playing. That's not VGK's. Tentative? That was not even. is out of the series, possibly. How well, is that tentative and you know play? what? They filled in quite no, a No, I want an example of where this is coming. What did you see that suggests the Knights are tentative just all watch, of a Just sudden? watch the way they watch you their demeanor. You watched it. You tell you watch, And you watch, and I'll give you one point here. James Neal. James Neal, if you could read lips on TV, folks. Could you read the goalie score? That looked tentative. If you, could, if you could read his lips last night, he was absolutely frustrated. They absolutely got into James Neal's head. He was upset at every single call. He was absolutely looking around, wondering where the next hit was going to come from. And I'm telling you, watch. I don't and they know that he was looking series. where the hit was going to come from. Series. I think he was looking for the And what did I tell you last week, guys? Been waiting two since nothing, the King two series nothing. Uh, what did I tell you guys? It's 1-1. One, one. What did I tell you guys? Yeah. I said it would be a split here. Everyone, 2-0. Oh, they're going to sweep at home. 1-1, one, one, folks. Haley, 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 go, go, go. No, that's, yeah. That's, Haley, let's go no, back no, to no. Haley. Go ahead. I never said, I never said 2 nothing. I said game two was a toss-up. I guaranteed the win in game one. And I've been pretty much right in any game that I predicted, particular game, I knew that the Golden Knights would win uh, games two and three against Winnipeg, which they did, all right? I didn't make a prediction on four and five. Okay. Uh, and I said one, they would win, and I said two was a toss-up, and that's exactly what it was. Tony's predictions Haley, come in at about a 10% Haley, yeah. clip. Haley, so Haley, we have a lot of, right. we have a lot of questions. We'll cool off. We'll talk about the ice, because that's what Leslie Robinson said. Do you think ice quality had anything to do with the turnovers? It's the first year for hockey in the desert and may not have mm -hmm. expected to play this far into the summer. No, well, I, I called I called the Iceman, George Gervin, and I asked him about this. No, oh, uh, Both teams are playing on the same sheet what of ice. What happened? So uh, yes, think... they're playing on the same sheet of ice. Yeah. However, if you watch the puck, it's not Causes flat. It to bounce a little bit more. It's not flat. Yeah. There's su the ice conditions are not what they were during the regular season. Well, and, not at all. And, and you know, your, your criticism of Tuck in that, in that last minute opportunity to get that last goal was that he didn't elevate the puck. If, if you got a bouncing puck versus one that's coming straight at you on a one-timer, it's going to come off the stick differently. Yep. So, I mean, it, to Leslie's point, it could have something to do with it. Um, but, again, to your point, they're both playing on the same sheet of ice. Yeah. So, I mean, you've you got to be able to adjust to it. And, you know, the, they, they've, been, they've been fixing the ice as they go. I mean, they just, they just got to do what they, what they can do. And, hey, folks, the, what great response tonight uh, uh, on our comments. So, please continue to, to pipe in, uh, make fun of Tony and what he's wearing, uh, yeah. like Albie did. Uh, good for you. Why? What, and, what happened? Um, What's wrong? And, uh, you know, say hi to Rick. I'm wearing we my like Rebel that. Red. Whatever. This is still one of the colors of our city. Go ahead and talk about Thank you. We, we have some more sound, so uh, I'd like to get to that. Nate Schmidt, okay. um, here he is after the game. I believe he also talking about the five on three and then expands on the rest of the game. Get on the road and start to um, get back to the our game. I think we did a, a great job in the first 10 minutes of the game. Then we, we got sucked in a little bit in the, tra the transition game that they wanted to play. What did you get to see of the great movie save at the end of the game? It's an elite level save, that's for sure. That uh, keeps the game up one, uh, up by one. That's, uh, and this time of the year, you need, you need things like that if you're going to move on. What was the biggest adjustment that you noticed them making from game one to two? I think they, uh, they didn't want to, they wanted us to turn the puck over. I think um, you know, if we play a more direct, I think we're, we're a much better team, uh, like we showed in the first 10 minutes. Uh, much better team than what we showed tonight. I think that we had an opportunity to, to take the game over at the beginning of the game, and then that's just the way that they play. They're a very opportunistic team. You know, if you turn pucks over, they're going to make you pay. One shot on the five-on-three for you know, 68 seconds. Is mm -hmm. that just a bit of a missed opportunity or something? Like yeah, that? you don't get a whole lot of chances to have five-on-threes, especially in the Stanley Cup final. I think uh, if you're not going to score, which, hey, you're not going out there and expecting it, but at the same time, you got to at least generate some momentum. And, the guys did, did their best, and hopefully uh, if we get another chance, we'll do a little bit better job. What's the message going into Washington now? You know, I think play, play more direct. Play, put our strengths. Let's try not to get sucked into the transition game that, that, that they want to play. 
they played that perfect little game in there. You know, the more that I hear the guys talking about uh, or talking again after the game, obviously you saw all the people that were in there. It was a little <laughs> rough to hear them uh, live. I think they're going to win game three. I do too. Yeah. I, they've, they've bounced back from every situation this season. That's why you haven't seen them go on an extended losing streak all year. And in the playoffs, they've come back from every single loss with really strong performances. I don't see what, why this would be any different. I mean, Tony, uh, let's just talk about how much Tony preached about the way the Sharks completely changed the series. They, the, the, the Knights won't be able to, to play with this team. They're too heavy, too skilled, too deep. They're fourth line, blah, 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 blah. And then they come out in game three and they completely dominated the Sharks in San Jose. I, I understand that the Capitals are a better team than the Sharks, but the Knights are a better team than the Sharks as well. Yeah, and Matt, I think Matt doesn't know how to, how to be a, a fan that loses a game. I mean, okay. so the, Dude, I've been a lost. Raiders fan my entire life. What are you talking <laughs> oh, about? Right. If anybody knows <laughs> Hallie, how to lose a game, Hallie, let's it's go. the Cubs and Raiders fans sitting yep. up here. Mr. I only cheer for the Yankees who win every single day. <laughs> okay, first of all... <laughs> First Good of all, reaction. Tony, Albie Vass came back and said most of his stuff is red, but you don't see him wearing it. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. just wanted to throw that out there. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Colvin said, "Poor Reeves. All he was doing was raising his hand to defend himself from Tom Wilson. About to cross check him. I hope his hand is okay." <laughs> and then Kevin Potter came back. Everyone is waiting for the fight with Reeves and Wilson. I don't think it's going to happen. Thoughts? It almost happened. I mean, it I almost happened. Got a good but little shot in. You got at, a good at this point, though. You got to do things to benefit the team, and that doesn't benefit what Vegas is trying to do. If it happens, it's going to be in a situation where the Knights have the game in hand, maybe midway through the third, and Wilson is just extremely frustrated and goes after Reeves because Reeves not going to back down if it's if it's not going to adversely affect his team. And I, I think that's the only situation. I don't think he's going to exchange if it's a situation where he could hurt his team. I think he's I think he's grown since that first series, and he understands what he needs to do to help this team win. Just nets off uh, day to day. Uh, that, I don't know if you mentioned that, but that was uh, official. So he's probably going to be a game time decision for game three. But looked like, I mean, he was clutching his hand. Uh, That's every hockey injury that, day to that day. Might, yeah, that might be. That if might, you lost your arm, you'd be day to day. Right. He hockey. might have broke his wrist, and that'd be day to day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Brady <laughs> McNabb on the hit, in case you missed it, looked like at first as though he went up high, right? But no, actually. It, because that's off. No, it, was it actually didn't. low. It was a hip check. It was a hip yeah. check. I don't know. Head. I don't know who's coming up with this. It looked high. He, I mean, with this high. he, he may have end. gone up. Yeah. He should with be suspended hip. for three games. Right. McNabb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about four minutes into the game, oh, and man. and then Kuznetsov, though, if you uh, look at Washington, though, big factor, twenty-five points in the playoffs thus far, yep. and if they lose him, they were able to fill in some gaps last night, but. It's going to be a big loss. I, I will give uh, the Capitals credit and uh, Barry Trotz talking about this in his press conference afterwards. He looked at two very specific aspects of game two that galvanized his team. One was the injury um, and it, their team rallying. Guys rallying, right? They've, they've done it all season long. Yeah. Backstrom missed a, a pretty long extended period of time. Wilson suspended for whatever kind of play that you know, he's up to um, during the season. It was that, and it was the five-on-three. You come out of that without giving up a goal, boy, you're going to feel a pretty you good run for sure. Rushing adrenaline. Be, I yeah, thought for sure. Yeah. sure it would be tied up mm -hmm. after that. Sure. Haley, we have a ton of uh, comments tonight and some, we some do. questions. Yeah? We do. Uh, so let's, let, let's back it up back a little bit. Going back to the ice, Tracy Hibden, well, you got to figure the temp change, and there's been a whole season of play on the ice. Could be they need to change the water filters. Clearer ice is a stronger hmm. ice, plus it was 100 degrees at game time last night. Yeah. Albie Vass, it's been 18 days since we last lost. They will bounce back. Yeah, everybody, uh, Knights fans are still learning also how, how, to, how to be hockey fans, right? Most of us. And uh, it, you lose three games through the entire playoffs up to this point. A game, uh, one loss, we'll be all right. Just everybody just relax. We'll we'll. we'll We'll, we'll quote Aaron Rodgers, relax. You know what's funny is with, with all of us sitting up here, fans of teams, Cubs, Raiders, Dodgers, whatever it is, Padres. Yankees. Padres. Yankees. You get – no, not the Yankees. They don't count, honestly. You get used to – no, 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 this is why. This is why. Because you get used to having that, that pessimism internally where you, you just Padres feel fans. like yes. you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop always. The Yankees don't deal with that because every other year they put a World Series up. But – you, you just keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, oh, God, this is – here comes that loss or here comes that losing streak. Here comes that, that play. It's, it's bound to happen. 
you don't feel that way with this team because they haven't given you an opportunity to feel that way. They just keep finding a way to bounce back and win games. And until they don't do that, I don't think there's any reason to believe that they can't do that. And they've shown nothing of it the entire season. I mean, their M.O. has been coming back resilient from what they did. And they, to what Washington did from game one to game two, you'll see Vegas do from game two to yeah. game three. And, and the adjustments that, that are made, Gallant has been brilliant with those all season long. Haley, we have a ton of comments, so I know. have at it. Get Every through time some. I try to read one, it's like, new, new, hey, new, new. Hey, way to go, Andy. Go Padres. I'll accept that. Yeah, there is that one. Also, we want to know if those are all <laughs> Thank Tony's. Thank you. <laughs> are those all Tony's sweaters on the desk? And also, Tony, look at me. Look at me. Why'd you shave? I didn't. According to the comments, you shaved. So I don't know. Well, I haven't <laughs> had that. I think, I think Tony garlic. shaves like on Mondays traffic. or Tuesdays, yeah, and exactly. that's it. I haven't had All a gnarly right. playoff beard, if that's what they're getting. Into. That's what, yeah, that's what we, we thought. They just that. called you gnarly, John. Only a week or two left, John. Hashtag fanboy. Uh, what else, Haley? Uh, I know we got a bunch. Right, yeah, what's I going know. on with this spot right got, here? We got, <laughs> I don't know. We got many. All right, Howard Taylor, he left yeah, his feet butt. on check. I think that was referring to the the butt, right? But can no? we talk about Imagine Dragons? No? Read that okay, one. Okay, fine. Yeah, what is <laughs> that? Talk about Imagine Dragons. Go ahead. How'd you nope. like it? Go ahead. Talk about Imagine Dragons. It was awesome. That was, uh, Matt was there. I was there. It was, it <laughs> was, follow me on Twitter. It was Fantastic. legit. Follow me on Twitter. It was legit. Uh, that was really cool. But uh, did you fact check this, Haley? Did they perform it? Yeah, did that? Oh, now, okay. Well, great. I mean, Thanks so for the research. Finally. For so, half an hour no, so so the song that the Imagine Dragons did last there? night, the song the Imagine Dragons did last night, is more or less the theme song for Washington. So there's a lot of irate fans. So you're gonna have to shift is their it, song. Well, their... So stop stealing Vegas' songs. Every well, every time there was a question. timeout in San Jose, I heard Lil, uh, Lil John. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Imagine How Dragons many people are in hours? the crowd knew that little fact before that concert went on, even during the concert. Uh, Did anybody even yes. know that? Unless, no, all the Washington wrong. fans. They're the only ones. Nobody. Only else fanboys cares. would know that. So anybody that's all up in arms now has no idea. Only Capitals fanboys would know that. Game. Only Capitals fanboys would know that. We need some that. balance yeah. on this show. I didn't Capitals plan on fan coming boy. on this show with a red shirt. Good tonight. lord! You didn't plan. Did uh, somebody put that on you when you got here? Happened. I want to talk Who about. Who got Tony the, dressed today? I want to talk about the Ovechkin goal. Now, uh, did Haley fact check this? Sorry, I'm cutting Let's you off. Let's talk on. Yes, he did score. Oh, okay. Let's talk about Ovechkin getting into the mix because. He didn't play a lot of minutes last night. I think it was only 17 minutes of ice time. He scored the goal, and uh, on that goal, England was late on the back door. Nosek uh, a step slow, yeah. defending the puck on the weak side yeah. of the goal. Something that is uncharacteristic, I well, think. Well, it was a cross-ice pass, too. I it mean, was it was a, a quick pass, it was a but quick still, pass. you got to guard against that. But there was that, a no big question. lane We saw the same right thing with Line that, that was Line going on all through the Winnipeg twice. series with Line A. Yeah. He scored twice on those, and they, they've adjusted to those. And they, it, the, like their, their defense well, exactly. was, was a, step, a step slow. We've talked about defense that. Defense hasn't been great yet. I mean, let's be honest. The defense hasn't mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. what the, the Golden Knights defense has been this whole season. And, and I, I don't know why, but that feels like a bit – I feel okay with that because you know that they can play that much better. These are close games without Vegas playing well defensively at all. If they get back to doing what they do well, I think that they can turn the series around pretty did you easily. See, did you see March Asso's comments immediately after the game um, on NBC's coverage? Uh, you know, they, they asked him about how they played, and he was, he was very straightforward with how they didn't play well and how things would absolutely be different in Game 3. And I have no, no, nothing to, to make me think otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If Holtby doesn't come up with that save... Probably right. overtime. we win. Well, no, but James Neal's uh, play might have been the showstopper of the night. I mean, as far as him scoring, tapping the puck mm-hmm. to himself. It's very cool. Uh, you know, and, and scoring the goal. Yeah. Which is why to call Holtby save the save right it now. It is the save. It's ridiculous it because that goal save. could have been the goal up to this point. Well, until, until, until I, I will say that the cup, that it's not the right save. Right now, it is, at this point of the series, it is the save. It's 1-1. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to go crazy. No, I agree with that. It's a great it was, save, and, it, and it, it saved them the game, quite literally. But long way to go, man. Long way so, to go. Someone was talking about, um, someone was talking about uh, Backstrom being out and, like, how they, uh, they compensated in Washington, yeah. right? Yeah. So Lars Eller played a really good game last night, mm-hmm. filling in. He might have to do this now, probably. Because uh, Nestoff, if he comes back, I don't know if he'll be back for the next game, maybe in a couple games. Just 
depends on the severity of, I think of a his lot injury. of it has and to do with what you, know you he get wants to play from a game three result. Yeah, you know what he wants exactly, and you know you know that he wants to play. But uh, Ellers filled in for Backstrom when he was out, uh, and the issue now is like whether or not he could do it for just a couple of games or a game here, a game there, and he might be one of the keys I think uh, for for Washington in this series. We have more questions, right, Haley? Tracy Hibden, Ovechkin, defense. You can't play defense when standing next to the cherry tree waiting to pick. That's not a question, but. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> she makes the point, and it's, I, I, I think, media day, right? Uh, T-Mobile Arena, which was really cool um, a few days ago. I can't even remember when that was. On Monday, it was on uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. um, or no, it was Sunday, Sunday. excuse me. Uh, but I, I think I heard, like, four Golden Knights players saying we can't leave Ovechkin <laughs> on the left side or in the left circle open to shoot. And, and that's did. exactly what they did. Yeah, that's his spot. That is <laughs> yeah. his spot. But that oh, shows yeah. you how poorly Absolutely. they're playing defensively. They're, yeah. right. they're not in the game defensively yet, and they need, they need to get back to that. And I think, I think it's going to be a huge point of emphasis in that locker room going into game three. Well, that, the microcosm of that was, was that four-on-four four goal they, got, they gave up because they were totally out of sorts and got completely out of position um, – with, with their defensive matchups uh, mm -hmm. in the four and four because they're supposed to mark up every man um, in, in the defensive zone and, and three men were on one guy. Yeah. So, you know, it was kind of how it went all night. Uh, first line, quiet. I mean, I'll admit that. Capitals played the first line pretty Very well. Quiet, um, yeah. But face-offs, Tony, I do want to talk about this. Me too. Golden I... Knights dominate face-offs. Of fact, you dominate. Know, you know 38 to 27. You know who did not win one, though? Hold Carlson. on, I want to hear that stat Carlson. again about face-offs. What? Carlson did not win a face-off. Yeah, what, did, what does Don Cherry say? say about face-offs? Did you see his face jacket last night? No, yeah. I didn't Plain see his jacket. Just, just, what does he say about face-offs? Why can't we get Give us your Don Cherry? Quote. No, no more Don no, Cherry quotes no, it doesn't until the Capitals argument. start no. winning face-offs again. <laughs> my narrative. So, <laughs> no. game three is in D.C. on Sunday, five, uh, Saturday rather, at 5 o'clock here Pacific <laughs> time. Yep. Why are they not opening up T-Mobile Arena? Yeah, there Open we go. Team Mobile. Holy cow. Yes. Come on. The Caps drew over 14,000 Final thoughts? Fans. Are we in final thoughts? Well, I'm not going to have any final thoughts yeah. tonight because I'm laying them all out on the line other than Don Cherry. I'll just say Don Cherry at the end. <laughs> but why won't they open up T-Mobile? Everyone's going to be outside, 100-plus degrees, in Toshiba Plaza. It's going to be hot, gnarly. And it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. People on social media were saying that they witnessed people passing out. Uh, I saw that. I did see that two. today. Yeah. Um, that there was only one, uh, like, water there's truck. Little, or, right. There's no restrooms know, out there. Yeah. Like, it, well, it what happens like is everybody starts debacle. drinking. They think they're okay and hydrated. Yeah. You Obviously, alcohol dehydrates you. And, and, and you're going you're gonna to fall out. You're yes. on cement? I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a grassy knoll of shade. I mean, it's, <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's uh, definitely not pretty that. brutal out there. So it doesn't make any sense. Right, you take the money, 10 bucks a person, um, and anybody can go in there and you sell concessions. I just, I, you know, I don't. So is it or, because or do, some, get it. Or do something the for the fans like they've done all year with, with, this, with the 5149 raffle. $10 to get in. Five of that goes to the to the. Golden Knights Foundation and five goes to a raffle so at the let end. Let me I mean, ask you though, why is this not because do they like don't that? want to pay the expenses to open up the building, which is it's very expensive to do that, as we know. But yet, I You're went the to the I think I went to the draft made a party. little bit of money in I went the, in to the, the draft party. Have you and right seen now, what there's the more people, are going for? There's more people in this studio than we're at the draft party uh, at the beginning of the season. I uh, talked with somebody that works at the arena that I see on a daily basis, and I said, hey, what's the deal? Why are they not opening the arena up? And he said nobody said anything about it. He said that's what he said. Except for the said entire city. And, and the employees are like wondering, hey, am I going to be able to come in? So he didn't really say that it was an expense thing. He just said it hasn't really been discussed. And I think that's just it, it something that's a problem. And it goes back to the hours. but it goes back to the signage, right? It's just yeah. people are kind Some of planning. oblivious to Some it. Planning. It's oblivious. Like, oh, do you think we should open up the arena? Like, maybe they've literally never had that conversation. And, and they're going to wait until, uh, I don't know, tomorrow? I, th I think it's a first-year I I so. first really mistake. So. I mean, every right. year in the playoffs, I mean, it, it seems to be the trend. When, when you get to the finals, I mean, look what Nashville did last year uh, with their road games. That place was packed and raucous. I mean, why, sh why wouldn't we do that? It doesn't why make any sense. And why wouldn't you want to be there? 
Yeah. If they open that arena, who doesn't want to be there to watch the game? You're you're basically at the game. Well, I'll tell you who wouldn't like be there. Would be it wouldn't were, be all, all of the people who are normally sitting low that, that spend all That's the right. money on the their tickets. Fans. It would give other it people an opportunity to get fans. into the arena people and go to have the facility and wait hours and can't afford a ticket. Bring the drum line in. Bring the Open the T-Mobile arena. Haley, what do you think, man? Should they open T-Mobile? Well, yeah. Okay. That's okay. it? Just, Good yeah. segment. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like common sense. But that yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. That was just my what else point. you got over there, Haley? Um, so, Kevin Potter, he said this a little earlier. So, if they lose next game, how deflating will that be? Uh, it'll be frustrating, but the, the goal right now for the Knights is to go on the road and do the same thing that the split. Capitals did, which you is to get split. a split. You have to, with the very minimum, go on the road and get the split because then you flip home ice back to Las Vegas and it becomes a best of three series with two of the three being a T-Mobile. Yeah. So deflating if they come home down 3-1, not deflating if they come home 2-2, obviously up 3-1 is optimal. I think they split in Washington. I think we're going to have a split, come back 2-2. Yeah. I hope that's worst case. I really do. I'd, I'd like to see them come back at the very least tied, but with a, with a lead would be great. What else you got? Uh, Kevin Potter again. So does VGK always do the Medieval Times intro for every home game? I thought it was only for home openers. No, no, they, they had they, 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 so they had the same the same opening throughout the entire course of the regular season. Then they changed it slightly for the King series. It was a little more, you know, King versus Knight centric, and then it got way more specific with the Sharks and with the Jets, and now with the Capitals. But it, the same the overall legit. premise is yeah. the same, right? The catapult was not, it's yeah, it's cool. You got the castle, and then you got the catapult a little bit down. I was kind of in, sandwiched in between them both. The castles got the fireworks. Catapult's cool, though. I yeah, mean, that, yeah. had that, awesome. some, oh, that had some weight on there. Point I mean, see it, something it, actually in it. <laughs> it was John, really neat. Tell us about uh, the media. Uh, we know that media have come from far and wide. Yeah. Uh, but where is the auxiliary media sitting now? Because you can't fit them all upstairs like we see during the course of the regular season. What are the accommodations? It's, you like? know what? It's Well, one, it's been interesting because there's people everywhere. Uh, I was talking with one of the, uh, the uh, sports home information home people for angle. the Knights communication that's people. Like, about 1,000. Uh, credentialed, not not full on media members, but you're talking about tech people <laughs> and uh, AV people from all the networks. You've got sets for Sports Center. Mm-hmm. You've got NHL uh, network indoors and outdoors. You've got NBC. Um, you've got local networks that are all setting up. So there's people everywhere. Um, so the media is taking up the standing room back by the castle. So there's no standing room behind where the castle is. Typically, they'd have that full service. All you can eat, all you can drink back there. That's kind of the party area. And now it's three tiers of seating. So you have one level, which is where the standing room is. Then they put up a scaffold for two more levels. So it's about 300 me- maybe or so media members that are inside the arena. That's why numbers have been down. Yeah. If you listen to attendance right. numbers, and that's they've exactly taken away right. a lot of the standing room only. Right. So those numbers have gone down. Mm-hmm. Okay. I actually wondered that. Yeah. Because they announced they announced 17-5. Uh, right yeah. Yeah. Right. When in the playoffs, it, it's been upwards of 18 Right, five. so it's about a couple hundred. We have more sound, right? Yeah, we do. And this is a bit of a, a bit of a right turn here, but Gary Batman had uh, addressed the media uh, before Game One, uh, before the series opened. Had a lot of things to talk about concussions. Really, uh, I mean, it's amusing. They're taking the NFL approach to concussions, just denying any link between concussions and CTE. That's going to cost them hundreds of millions of dollars at some point. And yep. they're in kind of a state of denial. It was really amusing. And there's a media member that I was told that. Anywhere Batman goes, this woman is asking the same question about, are you looking at the link between concussions and CTE and what's your research? <laughs> and he gives her the same answer. But he also had something to say about uh, sports betting uh, becoming uh, nationwide now, and they're taking the NBA approach. Here's Gary Batman talking about sports betting across the country. The... Uh... Two responses, and I'll see if Bill wants to add to that. The first is we're looking for consistency. Whether that can be done federally, which would make it easier to make sure the rules of the game, uh, the types of bets that are being played, how things are being conducted, we'd like consistency, and we'd like not to have it vary state by state. Now, if all the states want to come together and do the same thing, that would be the equivalent of federal legislation, uh, and that's something that we're focused on. Uh, you know, we have, I'm not sure I buy the term integrity fee. Uh, I don't worry about the integrity of our players. I think, though, if you're going to allocate for yourself to run a business 
on our intellectual property and the performance of our athletes and the platform that we put on for our games, we're entitled to be involved in that. Nothing that. Uh, so Batman, to sum it up, wants federal oversight, really, and if the states adopt something, he'd like the states to adopt everything. And he's saying what the NBA won't say. The NBA calls it an integrity fee. Really, it's really it's a tip. That's it's a, a tip. <laughs> but he just came out and said, hey, it's not. we're not calling it an integrity fee. If you're going to make money off of our product, we want a piece of the action. The NBA won't say that officially, but that's what Gary Batman So said. Batman was a guy who I thought was a little bit sour, at least on the surface, when Vegas got – really, everything Bill Foley was asked to do when Vegas got the franchise here, Foley did, right? Like, he kind of put his money where his mouth was at. You have to put up all this money if you want a team. You have to prove to me that Vegas can support a team, all this other stuff. And literally, Bill Foley had to jump through amazing hoops. So has he kind of – now I feel like he's on the bandwagon just like the rest well, of the guys. Well, no, I, I, I don't – like, I feel like he's on the bandwagon. Well, you're negative Nelly. I, I don't – I think Bettman wanted the NHL here. I mean, I, I think he did quite a bit to get the NHL here. And, uh, I mean, if, if – think about what – I mean, you, you couldn't predict what happened – but what the Vegas market does for the league has been has been huge, and I think Bettman saw that beforehand. Uh, he feels vindicated, uh, to your point, and that's he talked about it at length. Uh, again, media availability before Game One. Um, I think it was more the ownership, not that he would say that you know there was any pushback from the owners, but I think it was kind of the saltiness from the owners about the success this year. But Gary Bettman, I feel uh, feels vindicated that hey, you know, we kind of you know set this team up for success, and we you know the the owners made their money. Uh, the, they're 500 million. You're talking about 17 million per team ish, um, and he feels like it was the right move. They wanted a competitive team. It was the first team in the salary cap era that was an expansion franchise, so they didn't want them to not be competitive. And uh, you know, he, he again feels they played by the rules, and look what they got. And the television ratings have been off the charts. Like yep. you talk Oof. about a, one and two, a big big boost for the NHL with these two franchises. They're two Cinderella teams, basically playing each other, the story of, you know, uh, a franchise that wins its first Stanley Cup game in 44 years of existence, and then the first year, obviously, expansion, Vegas Golden Knights. But uh, nearly half of the TV sets here in Vegas have been turned on to the game. The others were watching The Bachelorette with me, so just in case you guys are wondering. But we also we – Well, but we've seen some. Uh, the, the last game, Game 2, set the record for – the most streams, live streams, uh, on NBCSN. So they have to be very happy. Advertisers have to be extremely happy about uh, what's happening with this series, too. It's, in, it's incredible. It's incredible that – and they've been the number one market. That's, that's what's so shocking. Mm -hmm. Through, between them and D.C. in this finals, how is it that a, that a market that's been around for nearly five decades can't, can't overtake Vegas, who just got here? I mean, it's it, – the the love and the passion that this city has for this team is just it's like it's like nothing we've seen around the, here. the numbers are about double so you look at it i think they said that the washington market had about a 15 rating and the vegas market had a 30 plus rating it was <laughs> it was it was you're talking about double the amount per capita folks of, you're of talking people. about a team yeah. that wasn't even on television here locally at the start of the season yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Didn't even didn't even have didn't, didn't have, have a TV a, a deal. Player a year they didn't ago. have a TV hey, did, deal. Did any of you well, after you think about uh, that. after was it game maybe it was game one? Uh, did anybody flip over to AT and T Sportsnet to watch the the post game coverage? I saw a little bit of it. Did did you, did you see the inadvertent f bomb dropped? Oh, uh, was that, that James fun. Neal? No, oh. it was it was uh, <laughs> the, our lead announcer. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was Connor, interesting. Was it no, no, the play by play. Really, Couché. Really? Wow. Yeah. Dave. Oh, wow. All right. Wow. How about I, that? I want to find that video. Well, he, he seems like such a nice guy. He didn't guy. Well, realize they. Anybody swears in the booth. You're he, a nice you know guy, that. John, but, You know that. I mean, well, right, any of us, any of us who have ever gone booth. live anywhere right. and gotten oh, a cue yeah. from a producer and said, go, and then they say, stop, and then they say, go, it's frustrating. <laughs> no, I think but, he was saying, tuck. I, th I think he was saying, tuck. <laughs> oh, oh, no. The, the, the emphasis on his face. It makes more sense. Haley, let's go back to you. All right. I like this one from Nicholas Colvin. What's your guys' overall take on the officiating through the first two games? Was it oh, one Oh, it's, man. In, well, oh, no, no, no. man. It's, it's so been bad. consistent. It's been consistent. It's been exactly. It's been yeah. perfect. It's, me and Tony agree. Ladies and gentlemen, me and Tony agree. So one-sided against the I can't believe it. No kidding. We agree on something. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. No, it's it's been extremely inconsistent. Mm -hmm. it, it, are you going to call a cross check? Or are you not going to call call a cross right. check? Like, I mean, <laughs> just 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 pick which way you want to go with it and go with it throughout the rest of this series, and everybody will be happy. At least at least that way, guys on the ice understand what's coming, what's not coming. You, you have to be consistent, whether it's consistently bad or consistently good. Just be consistent. It's can like an someone with a strike zone? Can someone explain what embellishment? Is. Oh, I love it. How, that was how, the how worst. How is it when you're young was, and, and I know, and but that was the worst. That, that was, was the worst, worst call, call of the, the night. Uh, that was terrible. Yeah, the, the worst of the series. Save the Reeves cross-check. If I grab called. Matt and throw him to the ground. It's a penalty, it's a penalty on me. It's a penalty on Apparently. him for falling That's to the ground. That's how it's going to work. Yeah. Well, that was a bad one. I mean, that was, no, that was, that no was a bad call. in hockey. I found it As some would say, it was egregious. Uh, I found it interesting that the Capitals, you know, they, they, after after game two last night, they were talking about how game one things didn't go their way and the hockey gods shined down on them uh, after the win in game two. And yet in game one, you have a blindside hit on Jonathan Marsh's show and the guy only ends on up who? with a two-minute two, two minute penalty. You know, yeah. I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it, it was a little it was a little off kilter. So I just thought it was odd how they didn't feel things went their way in game one. The fourth line played extremely well in game one, assessment in game two. I think I think kind of the same assessment of the team. Uh, it, it wasn't as good as it needed to be. I mean, they, I, I think I think we are four lines deep solid, um, but every every line did not produce what we were what we were. Holding. You're not going to get three goals from from your fourth line every night, but you also want to you want to hold the other line in check and you want to be productive. And I, I just think overall that uh, they they didn't get out of every line what they wanted to. They weren't they weren't very impactful. Honestly, I mean, they, I don't think they impacted the game they way in, in a positive way. That Reeves penalty was bad. That was a stupid penalty to take, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and it, it ultimately cost the team. But, um, you know, they got to get back to what they did in game one, which is, which is be, be aggressive. They're such, a, they're such an aggressive line, uh, especially on the forecheck, and just kind of grinding guys down and not allowing teams to do what they, what they do well, especially when you, you put them against a, a first line which you don't see very often, and they're able to frustrate teams like that. I think that's what they need to get back to. It was the Capitals' fourth line scoring two goals in, uh, in game two, so mm -hmm. maybe they saw what VGK did in game one and, and felt like they needed to fight back. It wasn't a, a fourth line. Uh, it wasn't the fourth line on the ice. It was uh, on the penalty kill, but I blame Nozick for giving up that Ovechkin goal. His head was on a swivel there. I mean, he mm -hmm. should have been playing him a little bit closer, so that was not, you know, while he's played excellent to this point, it wasn't, you know, his best night. Um, especially defensively. What do you think changes for Game Three, for VGK? Uh, uh, I, defensively, I think they really start to get after it. I think no. you're going to see about a completely no. I don't think anything changes. Change. I don't think anything changes. I, what, what, I mean, what changes? What would you, you change? I don't right. know that. I, I just tuck don't. back to the second line. I mean, would that would? It, I mean, that would yeah. be the only yeah, that real that was, that was a right yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not going to be a permanent change. No, no, that was that was game flow trying to mix things up. Uh, I don't know if you see Tatar come into this series yet. That's what I was wondering. I, I just who, I don't, who would you replace though? I, I mean, I, generally you look at you look at Carpenter. As, I think Carpenter's the, been solid, and, and I agree with that, which is why I don't think should have been a penalty Tatar. shot. I thought how should have been yeah. again. Yeah. What, shot. what what okay, defines absolutely. a penalty yeah. shot? Yeah. And, and I if you are taken down from yeah. behind on a scoring right. opportunity, I had yeah, a lot of. Uh, I'd yeah. say about ninety percent thought that it, it should have been a penalty shot there. I ten percent with what you and your buddies, and me and Steve Carp. I think go. Steve Carp said no <laughs> way. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I know. I said no. He's from the school of time. I said that I thought that it should have been a that, penalty that, shot. To, to the point we just talked about a few minutes ago, the inconsistencies Inconsistent. are were glaring, and and shame on, on on us for not mentioning that earlier. But that was. Another egregious miss. When you have somebody who's who's getting ready to take a shot and he's taken down from behind, that's a penalty shot. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe maybe you see a change up with Lucas Pisa. He's been a, he's he been was a horrible little, in game one. Yeah, he's he's been a little <laughs> off. I mean, Hallow was the great Spisa of game. Either, but yeah, of game two. I, I'm, other than that, I don't. Spisa actually had the assist though on the Neil goal. Yeah, and we don't know we don't know how that was all how Neil is yet. He's been skating with the red jersey, so we don't know if he's Who? ready to go. Carrier. Carrier, that's what so, I was going to ask. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you but see didn't he, anything. Did he take the red jersey off the other night? That was for the, op that was for the optional okay. skate where there wasn't, you know, there wasn't enough bodies yeah, on the ice. So you don't think really he's going to be back in this series? Will we I don't see? know. If, if, if they do, do you throw him in for Spiza? I, mean, I don't think you, you switch him out for Reeves right, right now because right. Reeves has really settled into his role. So Reeves I'll came out. Sorry, was Reeves was the extra skater right. on the six on five. I don't know if you caught that, but Gallant threw Reeves out Reeves there to out put there. A, a body in front of the sure, in front of the net. Because you can't really move. Yeah. 
Uh, we have some good Rihanna comments. Rihanna D, uh, that's a good uh, comment there. Do you want to get to that? Haley? Yeah, she's just asked, she, she missed the beginning, so she wants to talk about how uh, Capital One Arena is only selling tickets to residents to of residents Maryland, and heard that today. And I think that that's the smart move. And here, uh, did you see Bill Foley wants to separate a lot of the Capital fans so that you don't have a cluster of fans where they can make an impact or a lot of noise. So uh, maybe they this see, is there, I wasn't the there, but guys, you were. There, there seemed to be a section that was a, a lot of red. Well, what I saw was a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't too. It was pregame. Well, it was pregame. They, well, yeah, they gathered was, in the corner, and then I, I actually game. did look specifically yesterday. Maybe I didn't scan the whole arena, but I was looking for big chunks of Capitals red. I didn't see it. Maybe they I were, just you missed know what? it, but because I didn't see you, it. So you're on the Castle side, right? right. I was on the opposite yeah. end, the Hyde Lounge side, mm -hmm. and they were below you in the, the, the like 119 oh, okay. area That's where it went over been, there. Right? Yeah, because I'm in not, the second deck. But they were they were in the in the first deck, but. Below about where 119 was. Matt, I'm sure very disappointed in you. But, uh, very disappointed in you. It's the fortress, not the castle. <laughs> it's a castle. I don't know. <laughs> there's a, a, name, whatever. It looks like a castle more, to me. There's a lot more questions. But, yeah, I mean, that, was the, that was kind of the area okay. where it was the sense. bigger group. Yeah, and that's the end they score twice on. So. Yeah. yeah. I like this one from Omar Sanchez. Yes. My dad just left the house during this one-point NBA final game and said, I didn't realize how boring the NBA was compared to the NHL. Oh, <laughs> it's been a Whoa. bad season for the NBA. I mean, it doesn't matter if it is a last-second shot. I don't even I mean, want to, to get it. off topic here from hockey it. for a minute, how irrelevant is the NBA, has the NBA season become? This is the fourth year in a row. It's Cavs-Warriors. And, again, you could have predicted it day one. Yeah. Cavs had a couple of close calls. Warriors with the Game 7 here against, against Houston. It's the same two teams. The NBA has become the most predictable league on the planet. It's, I can't watch it. I just cannot watch it. Back to hockey. Although, although if, if the Knights go to four straight cups, you, you can call it predictable. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I don't see that happening, but that'd be great. Omar followed up with Washington. Owner bought like 200 tickets for their staff for Game 1 and 2. Nice. I hope they don't, hope they don't so scalp them. So they're okay them. coming here, but... Foley, um, where's, where's everybody's tickets? Yeah. But uh, Nicholas Colvin, what about when Washington knocked our goal off the pegs and McNabb was there, Knights breaking the other way, blown dead face off our zone, Washington score? No punctuation, but good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's inconsistent. I mean, that's – so it's a sloppy series right now from, from all sides, from officiating – Defensively on both sides, offensively on both I thought, sides. It's I thought been a game sloppy one series. I thought game one was a dirty game. I thought last night was just sloppy. Yeah. I didn't think it was. It was very disjointed. You know. So you, you change you you change the Howla call. You change the Carpenter call, and um, and hope he doesn't make that crazy ridiculous save at the end. I mean, three things that very well could have been very different in the game. Who knows? Yeah, it's that's why it's a one-one series. Yep, go to DC and get one at least. Hell, yeah. There's a lot of okay. Comments. There's a cute one from Scott Mercer. My kids love these guys. Awesome to be able to learn about the game together. Growing up in Vegas, this yeah. is what the kids in town need. Go Knights, go. Go Knights, go. Yeah, it's it's been lowercase. It's been a lot of fun to to just to, to go to a movie and everybody's wearing Knights gear. You know, go to the grocery store. You see everybody wearing Knights gear. We've, we've never had that in this city where everybody is wearing the exact same thing. I mean, you know, since 1990 when everybody was into the Rebels, but it was such a smaller community then, and you didn't have the same, the same kind of reach and how much you have do you now see, with this team. How much do you see a Knight fan see another Knight fan, and what do they say to each other? Go Knights go. go, Knights go. go. I mean, yeah. it's, it's become our roll tide, you know, yeah. which, which is really cool. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's exactly what this community has been missing forever. And it's great to finally have that here. Yeah. Everybody's wearing gear. Everybody's got flags on their vehicles. Everybody has stickers in the windows. You see it everywhere. It's amazing. Uh, we have some other sports news, and then we'll get into predictions and wrap things up. Uh, Raider Nation, uh, OTA is continuing this week. Uh, the players can't believe all the energy that John Gruden brings. Derek Carr is saying this week, that man has like 20 cups of coffee, I guess, because he has another level that he takes it to, and he really hasn't stopped yet. And I think that there's, there's going to be some chemistry, I think, between those two, uh, Matt, between Gruden and Derek Carr, and that uh, they're really working closely together. And I think that Gruden's really pushing Carr right now to, to the max. Gruden's a quarterback guy. He played quarterback. 
in the, in the Super Bowl against the Raiders when he coached Tampa, he was the scout team quarterback that week to, to, to uh, basically be Rich Gannon in practice and let the defense know what, what they were going to do. He is a quarterback guy, and Derek Carr, is a, he's a grinder like Gruden. He likes to get in there early. He stays late. He's a film rat. He's a gym rat. He loves to be around the facility, and, and Gruden is the perfect coach for him. I think these guys are going to work great together, and I think you're really going to see – Carr's game elevated, not just not just stat wise, and yeah, he's throwing for more touchdowns thing. Just as a quarterback, the way that he sees the game, the way that he reads a defense, uh, you're going to see his footwork improve. You're going to see field vision improve. This is going to be great for Derek Carr, and these I think these two for the next ten years are going to be inseparable. We have some UNLV athletics uh, news to report. UNLV basketball today. It was announced that the Rebels and the University of Cincinnati. We'll be playing a home and home starting in December here in Las Vegas. What? Yeah. <laughs> Mick Cronin. Yeah. And the what? Rebels. Yeah. That makes no sense to the, me at all. Wow. The Rebels. Apparently the, the <laughs> Rebels. Somebody really loves rubbing salt in their oh own. Oh my moves. gosh. The we're Rebels just. Gonna, we're gonna let's do that. just pour some that more. That guy gonna do a home and home with Texas Tech like too. Does? Yeah, that's oh, the Rebels. Hell? The Rebels non-conference that's the first now. I heard of it. It's now shapes up with games. They play games here against BYU at T-Mobile. They'll be on the road at Illinois. Oh, Come on UNLV back, will be playing in the Diamond Head Classic oh, in Hawaii with Colorado and Rhode Island and St. Mary's, Hawaii, Welcome Charlotte. I think Bucknell is also yeah, just, in that uh, field. And absurd. there's a big recruit here on campus uh, this week. Christian Brown arrived today. He's that five-star recruit from South Carolina that we've talked about. Uh, he's a swing man, about 6'6", and uh, he's – Narrowed it down to seven schools. So <laughs> is that all? But again, this is one of the is players that, that would be part of the class of 2019 coming in. No. UNLV football. Nine uh, Rebels were named today on the Athlon preseason All Mountain West Conference team. Lexington Thomas selected to the first team. Yes. All right. Are you guys Bunch watching the guys? Awards. Are you guys watching? That'll get it done. That team up north. So Cody mm. and no, Caleb not, we Martin. We don't want to talk about them. Six months. Cody and Caleb Martin. Oh my God! They announced that they're, they're coming back. Another down UNR. year for UNLV, anyway. They, I mean, they're they, they blow announced the doors a, off a the pre preseason yeah. top ten for for they're college They're in basketball. the top five. They they yeah. put them they number six. Yeah. Well, they Tony, have to be the number Martin five. Twins weren't coming back. They were still going to sweep UNLV. That, yeah. It doesn't. They're the so, best team in the league now. They're the best team in the league. It, it best team it's in the irrelevant. West. Well, they're, they're so they have the two Martins coming back. Jordan Caroline talking about this. Jordan Caroline over the weekend. He said that he'll be back now, so he yay, didn't hire an agent. Hey, Wolfpack! Yay. Then there's Moving also on. there's, I think five or six transfers that all averaged in double figures scoring last Wait. year, and a six ten power forward Tony, this from is, uh, Napa know. Prolific Prep in California, Jordan Brown, the McDonald's All American, oh my God. the five star that's headed to Reno. But I don't know why we need to bring this up. It seems like it's. This is I guess it's about time, right? They've taken no. I don't want to. I don't know. Do we have to? Decades. Talking about we should this? be I mean, talking about the Rebel you know, program. We don't want to talk about, 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 about it's not yeah. very good right now. <laughs> there, yeah. There's no reason about, why they shouldn't be that good. Exist, sports going on right now. Yeah. Hey, let's go to Luis. I want to set up our boy Luis Negretti. Uh, excuse me, Negrete. Sorry, Luis. I was say, saying... Uh, Is he going to talk about the lights again? Hey, Luis works hard behind the cameras, and when he has a story, we want to hype it up. So we want some comments. You guys have been great all day. Luis doing a story on the home opener for the Las Vegas Aces, uh, and I haven't watched it yet. I'm assuming it's going to be fantastic. Luis, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic, but It's going to be all right. Uh, <laughs> Come on, he set you set up. Set it up. So before the Aces uh, flew out to Seattle f to face uh, the storm again for the second time in seven days, we were able to cover their home opener at the Mandalay Event Center, which was really, uh, it was shocking. It was a really good atmosphere, and here is more about it. The Aces open up their home season at the Mandalay Event Center by hosting a fellow Western Conference hey. opponent, the Seattle Storm. Although there wasn't an Aces victory, the home opener for the fourth professional team in Vegas in the last two years was nothing short from exciting. Despite the 105 to 98 loss, 2018 number one draft pick, Asia Wilson had a season high of 27 points. 
I mean, we just kept fighting, kept pushing, and Coach Coach Bill just told us, you know, don't don't lay down, don't give up, and that's that's a part of us. That's built inside of us as competitors. So uh, it wasn't a doubt in my mind that we it wasn't going to be a good game at all. So for us to come out and really fight like that, I think it's something special and something. It's definitely it's the future of, the, of this team. WNBA President Lisa Borden was in attendance at the Aces regular season home opener and gave us an insight of why the WNBA picked Vegas. Las Vegas can support not only sports in general, but women's basketball specifically. So when we looked at markets across the country where we wanted to have a tremendous team, mm -hmm. Vegas was a very natural right place by the numbers. <laughs> 60 to 32. Tomorrow. Yeah, and they're home tomorrow night. All right, head of Luis. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, as you, as you said, Rick, the Aces are down 26 right now at halftime. Yeah, that's But uh, hopefully they bounce back tomorrow night and – just a quick fact, the Aces' average age of average, I mean, we, average age. their average age is 24, so I think there's potential within the next couple of years. So well, you're and, and the atmosphere was really cool. I, I'm just curious because I wasn't there. I'm, yeah, it, it was, uh, there was over 4,000 people. Uh, there's a lot of sections that were closed, yeah. but uh, it just felt like it was almost sold out. Cool. Yeah, great atmosphere. They did it up right. Uh, Boys to Men sang the National Anthem. was fantastic. Yep. Uh, the Jabberwockies performed at, at halftime, which was also great. Um, you know, like, like you said, and, and, and great job. But uh, it's a young team, and you just got Kayla McBride and Kelsey Plum back from their overseas teams. They, they'd only been back like two days before their home opener. And, um, you know, it's a good product. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's fun to watch. So really uh, cool bring them out to uh, see them tomorrow night. Court side, opposite side of the court from the benches, they've got what look like poker tables. Yeah, set they're up, blackjack tables. Blackjack tables, yeah. yeah. Set up, and uh, there's a handful of seats on them. You can buy the seats, uh, buy the tables per game or for the season. And it just, it just, just a cool Vegas tie-in uh, to give you something different sitting court side. It'd be what, what what's behind, you know. Gucci Row at the Thomas and Max. Somebody give Luis a comment, please. He worked hard on that story. I'm waiting for the comments to roll in. Oh, look at this. Luis is awesome. That was a terrific story. Thank you for that comment. Uh, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. There we go. Wait, would rather have the person. Okay. Well, all right. Still, that was a positive for you, Luis. Well, thank you for that story. Hallie. Give us uh, some uh, yep. some comments. Oh, you want me to read the most recent comment? Yeah. That John didn't want to read? No, Tracy was given. Tracy is a man, by the Luis way. Luis is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what Tracy said. <laughs> that's journalism. Yeah. Oh, man. Way to spin it, John. <laughs> uh, did we talk about Omar? No. So Omar Sanchez said to Tony, it's Adrenaline LV, not Adrenaline Reno. Thank you. Tony. Okay, Omar, we're just trying to cover. Oh, whatever. We're just trying to cover all the sports, not only here, but what's going to impact our local market? Omar, about in the and the eight months. In eight months. I don't think that. I think that's going to impact top our local five. market. Top five. Reno was going to win the Mountain West anyways. How do? Yeah. How do those guys coming it. back? Don't feed into top it. Five. So now don't the Rebels will lose by final forty four. instead of twenty. Oh, Perennial right. final four. Haley, continue. For Omar. No, whatever you want. Oh yeah, sure. They're loaded. <laughs> It was fun, but we need to win and no blowouts. The game was only fun for the first and last five minutes. What do y'all think about the Buckeyes? Buckets. <laughs> buckets. Buckets the rabbit. I <laughs> like Buckets the rabbit. Buckies. What? what? Did you say the yeah, Buckeyes? You got an Omar. It no, Omar. It Omar. Came just up typo. as I was reading. I'm going to typo, stop typo. myself. Oh, it does say Buckeyes. It says, yeah. It's supposed to say Buckets. Right, buckets he, the rabbit. They're their mascot. The it's, it's great. Mascots are for the kids. I love it. It's good. Buckets. Back yeah. to hockey, guys. So. Oh, okay. Game three, any predictions? And then are you still sticking with your original predictions for the series? My prediction was oh, Knights I, and Five. I won't say anything. Until they lose two games, the potential for Knights and Five is still there. I think they win game three. We'll see how they look. We'll see how both teams look coming out of game three before we get into game four. But I think the Knights will win game three. Objectively, do you think that this series could be over in five games? I don't. I don't. I don't, but I'm not going to – why am I going to change my pick okay. now? I'm not you, Tony. I don't waffle. Knights in five. Guys? I, I picked Knights in five, and I, I think so much depends on, on what they do in game three. I mean, the, the way they come out and play. And it sounds like an obvious statement because if they lose, obviously that prediction is nothing. But um, I, I think if they come out and, and change things up and fix the things that went wrong and have a strong performance – that could play into game four. So, you know, I, I, I guess stay, I'll stick with it. Knights and five. Yeah, I picked Knights and seven. 
So I, I, I don't see how it's not going that way. Uh, I, think they, I think they win game three, though, now. I think that, you know, they've been home for a little bit. They got to stay home going in the Stanley Cup final. I think a road trip would be a nice, uh, a, a nice thing for this team. So I think they bounce back in game three. I think they lose game four. I think it's 2-2 coming back to Vegas. And it's game seven at T-Mobile Arena, and it's going to be nuts. What did I say? Caps and six. I did say yep. caps and six. I said the caps and six, and I just think no. it's a really no. evenly matched series. It's playing out exactly the way I thought it would. Mm -hmm. It would just be that evenly and tightly contested, and it's become a very physical series. Then why want to go seven? And I've been, I've really enjoyed it. If it's so evenly matched and tightly contested, why nights and why because I'm going to stick with my original prediction mm -hmm. of six. Haley, let's. Uh, do you have any uh, closing It'll comments wrong, or anything so else? Fine. Yeah, fine. I'm just going to stick yeah, with it. It's great. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple things I missed. Dave Hutchins just chimed in and said, "I want you to be right." Nights in five. Kevin Potter, he's been talking a lot this show. He said, "Definitely going six or seven, in my opinion." Matt Young wants to know anything Is about am, upcoming Ali? mountain bike races in Vegas. <laughs> Where's Alan? Snell? That's my buddy. That's my buddy, Matt. Where's Alan? What's at? up, Matt? Thanks for tuning in. It's inside okay. joke. Inside joke. Okay. Okay. Is that it? I think so. That's it. Do you <laughs> guys want to do it. final thoughts? I just, uh, I don't have, have any you final thoughts. You have a meeting. I, I got mean, nothing I, left I, today. Yeah. You got any more we notes? Just had our, no, we just had our predictions. Uh, Open up T-Mobile Arena. Open, yeah. I mean, did you get enough signage? Hold on. Rick, no. Rick had something, right? About, uh, no. Oh, well, we talked about the Imagine Dragons earlier. I, I, just, I just think Vegas has upped the game when it comes to our pregame. And when was the last time that you saw that much time dedicated on a national broadcast to show the home team's pregame uh, ceremonies and show that they, that they did. Kudos to them for that. Because, I mean, I, I do have an issue with the fact that they're not opening up T-Mobile for uh, the, the road games, they but to. kudos to the crew that put together uh, and took, it, took the next step with the catapult, with, with the live orchestra and, and the Imagine Dragons. That was awesome. That was really, really cool. The NHL's um, going, hey, guys, look, hockey's fun. Yeah. So why not? So good job, and uh, go Knights go. Lower cap. Lower I got case, a question. No caps. Is Randy Couture a Las Vegan? Why was he up there with the siren at he's the start got, of the, the Randy game? Couture, he's got, the he's got his gym here. And okay, is he an OG like Kyle Busch? Did you have a problem with Buffer announcing? Yes. You did know you? why? Because he did it in Reno. He or did it in Reno. That That's what I was. That That's guy. exactly what Who you read. Who cares? You read my Twitter. It was totally <laughs> Vegas. It was totally Vegas. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're going to use Michael he Puffer. Hey, he'll go wherever, years announcing wherever the money is, it's still money. Tony. 30 years announcing fights in Vegas. So he Randy does Couture, one game go ahead. Reno and all. So Mr. Oh. Born and Raised and the other Mr. Born and Raised, uh, Randy Couture. And Wayne really? Newton. Wayne Newton. Yeah, but he's been he here for. Raised. Yeah, but he's been here oh, for ages. But it doesn't count. If he's it been here longer there. than Randy Couture. You thought oh, Randy Couture Lord. was a good call? Well, it's I UFC. didn't think it was a bad UFC call. Is based here. I understand that. Yes, they have a gym here. I think, Thanks, I think that's why they call him the final pups. Haley. Lil John said in game one, he was like, you know, this team. Oh, I thought not Lil John commented. I'm like. <laughs> This game's not, it, Turned this down team for isn't what? just for, you know, the locals and everyone. He was like, but it's for the people who come to Vegas to work and okay. support Vegas in that way. So, All right. Lil John I like, said uh, it. Yeah. Lil John's just burned okay. Tony. I like, I like <laughs> that's what just happened. I like uh, Doc Emmerich saying, and now we go to Lil John. <laughs> yeah. That's like a, my favorite part. Little, little, other little than, John. other than uh, of course, Don Cherry's poker coat. So, the jacket was awesome. What does he say about face-offs? He says... <laughs> said Tony's never we'll see right. who wins face-offs next game, and William Carlson cannot win a face-off. So that'll wrap up our show for tonight, everyone, gents, ladies, lady. Uh, of course, uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Haley Brooks, thank you so much uh, with Haley's comments. Luis Negretti, nice piece there on What'd your you Las Vegas Aces and uh, our production assistant on the show, produced by Richard Jacobino for Rick Strasser. For Matt Gutierrez, for John Castanino, I'm Tony Cardasco. So long from Las Vegas. And hopefully the series will still be going on when we're back here next week on Thursday night. Take care, everyone. Good night. Go Knights, go. What's the score? The Cleveland, the bronze. The bronze has 49 points. He's the whole team. I mean, well, I wouldn't even say that.